Kia ora team, welcome to another online tutorial. We're going to be talking about angular displacement, angular velocity and angular acceleration. Specifically, we're going to work through displacement, velocity and acceleration, how they relate to each other and how they're different. Okay, These concepts are often confused by students, so we're just going to give a little bit of clarity here, hopefully help you get into some physics. Okay, So starting with angular displacement, and I'm just going to draw a circle to start. Okay. Angular displacement is the angle that an object is rotated through. The symbol for this angle, or angular displacement, sorry, is theta, and the SI units are radians, which we call, well, refer to here as rad or rads often. Okay, so if I were to actually draw the center of the circle and our radius out, okay, this being R, oh my goodness, undo that. This being our radius, this being our displacement. Remembering that if our radius and our displacement or the arc of the circle are the same size, we have a radian. Okay. Now, our displacement, okay, equals R theta. Theta being our angular displacement, where D is our translational distance which is the distance in which has moved along the arc of the circle or the circle has rotated along if you imagine the circle if it was a wheel being in contact with the surface or the ground theta which is our angular displacement and again using SI units here tra translational distances in meters our angular displacement is in rads, or in radians. R-A-D. Okay. And our radius, again, a distance, is in meters. So, nothing too crazy here. All we're saying is that when we have an arc or a circle and we're traveling along that, we have a radius, we have an angle, okay? And that angle that has been moved through or rotated through is our angular displacement. The actual distance along the edge is our translational distance. And this would be how much of the circle, how how a distance along the circle, along this arc of the circle, that would actually have been in contact with the ground, etc., if it was moving as a wheel. So again, just going to mark this off and throw a little arrow in that that is actually our angular displacement, theta. Okay. What about our velocity? If I am to redraw this circle... And back to small. Okay. And again, we have this angular displacement present. If this uh, circle is rotating or this object is rotating, okay, we're going to have a velocity. Now, angular velocity is the rate of change of an angular displacement. Okay, so how fast this displacement is occurring. So seeing as our displacement from previous here is measured in radians, our velocity will also have a unit that is measured in radians. Now, we will use both our SI units, radians and seconds. So much like when we refer to velocity in kinematics, we use meters per second. For our circular motion, we're going to use, or our angular displacement, angular velocity, we're going to use radians per second. Okay. So we have a, a few different things here. Okay, so we usually give the symbol for angular velocity as omega or lowercase omega, which looks like a wobbly w, okay, and we give it as omega equals the change in our angular displacement over the time it took for that displacement to occur, okay. So again, the change in angular displacement over the change in time, where Omega equals our angular displacement, or our angular uh, velocity, sorry. 
Okay, and that's measured in rad per second. Okay, as well as our angular displacement. which is measured in radians and time, which is in seconds. Now, our actual angular velocity would be the rate of change of that rotation. How many radians you're moving through a second or is rotating through a second? That would be our omega. So, just to recap, we have our displacement, which is the angle at which we have rotated through, okay, with our translational distance on the outside of the circle or arc. We have our velocity, which is the rate at which this rotation has occurred, which is in radians per second, and denoted here with omega. Now, we can relate these two things. So the angular and translational quantities are linked with an equation. Okay, That equation is, and I'll see if I can fit it up here, uh, V equals R omega, where V equals our translational velocity, And that would be the actual movement along the outer edge or arc of the circle, which would be in meters per second. Okay. Omega, same as below, where we have our angular velocity in radians per second and our radius. Uh, we shouldn't need any introduction. And it's measured in meters. Nothing too crazy here. We're just saying, as you rotate through this value, okay, which is proportional to the radius, by a given radius, we can calculate the actual velocity at which this object would be moving translationally. So if this was a ball, a tire, anything like that, okay, our translational uh, displacement occurring over a set period of time, which would be our translational velocity, is proportional to our radius, and we can calculate using our translational, or our angular velocity, sorry, getting a little bit mixed up, but we can use those things to find each other, okay? And I'm just going to dot this off so we can keep the working separate. Okay, in fact, I might get rid of that one on the bottom just because I'll probably overtake that space in a moment with acceleration. Now, let's move on to angular acceleration. Angular acceleration is the rate of change of an angular velocity. So we have our angular velocity up here. Okay. And if this ball or this object was rotating down a hill, for example, it would be speeding up as it did so. It would be accelerating. Okay. So the rate at which it is rotating through itself would increase. And we would get an increase in the rate of change, an increase in the angular velocity, and therefore we would get an angular acceleration. Okay. It's usually given with the symbol alpha, okay, similar to normal acceleration previously used, and is measured in radians per second per second. So again, similar to when we use acceleration traditionally in kinematics, and we get meters per second per second or meters per second squared, we're going to get radians per second per second or radians per second squared. Okay. By substituting angular quantities into the equation um, for our normal A equals delta V over delta T, we can actually get an equation which we can use here. So I don't need to draw a new circle because we're only talking about the actual change in the angular velocity, how that changes in time. So we're just going to assume that our picture goes down here perfectly fine, okay? But we get the equation. And this is built off our understanding of uh, acceleration in a typical sense, which would be A over delta V over delta T. And we get acceleration equals a change in our angular acceleration over the time in which it took this change to take place. Okay, nothing crazy here. Being our angular acceleration. Okay. 
omega again being our angular velocity. And time being t as always. Okay, lowercase t, time. And if we put our equations in here, sorry, our, our standard uh, unit, we get radians per second per second, or per, radians per second squared. We get radians per second and we get seconds. Nothing too crazy there, okay? But we can actually use the equations we've got so far by substituting some things around to relate our uh, translational quantities with our um, angular quantities or displacement. So with this here, we can move up and we get the equation A equals or our, this would be our normal acceleration. Okay, let's switch this one up to be a little bit more alpha-like. Okay, equals the radius times our angular acceleration. Okay, with our standard A here, oh, it's a daisy. Our standard A here being our translational acceleration. R being our radius, which as we're dealing in radians relates to almost everything, okay? This being in meters a second squared, our radius being in meters, okay? And our angular acceleration being in uh, radians per second squared, okay? So, in summary, if I just look here, regarding displacement, it is the actual angle moved through. If you imagined drawing a line along your radius of an object, the angle moved through that is going to be our angular displacement. Okay, And with that angular displacement, we can calculate the translational distance in which an object has moved. With our angular velocity, we have the rate at which this rotation is occurring. Very similar to how we calculate velocity in a standard sense. Okay? And we can again use this to calculate our translational velocity. So how fast this object here would be rolling all right, in a straight line. We can use our understanding to calculate ex uh, angular acceleration and then use that angular acceleration and how everything relates to radius again to calculate uh, translational acceleration. So how fast the circular object would be accelerating in a given direction um, translationally rather than angularly. So hopefully this has been helpful and not too confusing. Yeah, I know I made a few little muddles up confusing translation and angular there and here and there. So hopefully that didn't throw you off. Um, get out there, team. Hopefully this helps you enjoy or at least do some physics. Good luck.